right? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for our friends, the angels. Uh, please have them surround us this Sabbath and open our eyes to who they are because they're in awe of who we are just receiving you today. So bless this Amen. word to our hearts. In Jesus' precious name, Amen. 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 In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Now, do we go slow enough for you? Not for, what? We didn't get those notes. We went too fast. Now, the first thing is, <laughs> angels in you, worthy is the Lamb, number one. Angels in you. Number two, angels rejoice in salvation, but they can't be saved. Number three, minister to believers in death, but they don't die. Number four, they know how to rescue and reassure the rest of us. And we look at Genesis 19. Okay. Number five. Are you excited? All right. They often appear in white. And they're not always angels of light. They often appear in white, but not always the angels of light. 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 All right, let, let's look at that point number five. If you go to 2 Corinthians, remember Corinthians? Oh. 2 Cor 11. What's your favorite book by Paul? This, this is a, uh, this very, how many books did Paul write? 11, very good. 14 after 14. All right, go to 2 Corinthians 11. Who wrote Corinthians? Yes, it was. Now, we're going to look at... What's the title of number five? Often appear in white, yet not always angel, but light. That's what that is? Yes. We're going to go down to... Um, did you find it? With the angels in there? Often appear in life. Second white Corinthians. But not angels of light. Not always angel of light. Not 14, always angels of light. Verse 14. Verse 14. Mm. Verse 14. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Do you see it in there? Yes. yes. Now, when you have an angel next to you, has everybody seen an angel in your life? Yes. Is there an angel over Ireland? Yes. Yes. So let's everybody back up. For our Bible study today, we will cover verses um, 12 down through 15. Everybody with me? And what... I do, I will continue to do in order to, to undermine the works of those who like to claim in their boasted admission that they work on the same terms as we do. To understand the context of what Paul is saying, number one, you can only boast in whom? Jesus. 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 What about Jesus should you always boast in? Crucified. The cross. So that's why it said that we preach Christ crucified. crucified. When you go by sometimes in a, a church and it says, we preach Christ crucified, risen, and coming again. So our emphasis, our boast, is solitary on Christ and specifically on the cross. Now at this time, to get the background of what Paul was saying, there was a group called Super Apostles. Now... They're alive today. What's a super apostle? I really live the faith. And all of you, you don't live like I do. And I have no, more, more knowledge of all of you. You don't know what I know. That's not humility. <laughs> so that's a super. Now, what does super mean? Above. 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 Um, and by the way, I'm really blessed. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm one of the elders, and I know it. Where do the super apostles abound? It's called clergy. Mm -hmm. Now, the clergy really started to develop in a bad sense after in the 300s when we became, uh, when Christianity under Constantine became a what? Legal. That became legal, right? That 
We had ten persecutions. The last one was under a man called Diocletian. And what has really destroyed the church, believe it or not, is the clergy. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's a scary statistic. The regular church clergy have never, never started a reformation of faith. Never. Never. And there's only one clergy one canonized the saint, St. John the Yes. Wow. Only one wow. in 2,000 years. Mm. So clergy are very dangerous. So, because they all John start Paul. to become super positive. John Paul. So it means that I know more than you. You got that, sister? Isn't John Paul the same? He's a pope? Right. So I'm talking about awesome. diocesan priests. Okay. Okay? Thank you. Now, so Paul says there, so now back up, everybody got that information? Yeah. So these are super apostles. And that's what Paul had to deal with. And then he says there, now what I will do in order to undermine the claim of those who would like to claim that they're both the mission, they work on the same terms as we do. So what do the super apostles say? We do that too. Be careful when somebody says we do that too. There should never be competition in the ministry. Mm. Is there? It reeks. There should be never competition with who is leading you opposed to who is leading you. Is there? Yes. Then it can form super apostles. Now, who should we boast in? The Lord Jesus Christ. And number two, specifically, His cross. That will keep us all the people we should be humble. Right. Next, verse number 13. For such men are false apostles. When you have boasting in your veins, you become a false apostle. And when you go down through, right now the church is, you, you've heard that experience, we're facing clericalism. Have you ever heard that expression recently? Yes. And that's parading around your office and showing... And if anybody, how many, how many have ever been offended by a clerk before? Nobody. Yes. Mm -hmm. One. Okay, just one person. Have you ever been? A I've been offended. I know you have. Mm -hmm. Brother Peter, have you ever been offended by a clerk? Not personally. Peter's quiet. He just sits in the back and listens. So. Not personally, but you read about them in the news all the time. All right, so. These are called false prophets. Now, a false prophet is someone who gives you false information. Amen. Deceitful workmen disguise themselves as apostles of Christ. Periodically, we get a list in the office. And you know what the list is? Is people parading around. And they come knocking on your door and say, my name is Father So-and-so. I'm legitimate, and this is what we need. Mm. Say a clergyman came up to you in the parking lot when you leave the church today, and he said, I needed money. Would you tend to give it to him? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And now, with that in mind, so we get, we get in our, uh, we, got one, we got one a couple weeks ago. One's, one calls him father, Father Anton. Mm. And so he, he knocks on doors. And they even throw out papers to you. Amen. So they're deceitful workmen next. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of what? Light. 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 So number five, you've got to be careful when you, because he is angelic. Can he falsely wear white? Yes. Can he say he's from God? Yes. Yes. All right, now, <coughs> here's a test, because you're going to bump into him in the last days. Ask him to say, Jesus is Lord. Hmm. He, can't he won't do, do it. He won't do it. 
1 Corinthians chapter 12, let me just uh, go back a few pages, you can say, no one can say Jesus is Lord except what? In the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Right. So, a lot of times, uh, like with St. Faustina and everything else, they received angelic visits. And sometimes people appear at the door and I say, oh Lord, is that an angel? They start cursing and using bad words. I said, that definitely is not an angel. <laughs> Amen? Amen. So, they appear as angels of the light. They'll mention God. Now, here's how you'll know, number two, how you know an angel has disguising himself. They'll talk to you about good things, minus the word repent. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So an angel. angel will never tell you uh, an angel of darkness will never tell you to repent. Mm -hmm. Never. It can't. So, say to it, number two, can you pray for my conversion? <coughs> it will say, out of here. Mm -hmm. Number three, it can. the angels can converse with you, as we've seen, right? From Genesis chapter three. Do you remember the conversation? And when the angel of darkness comes, did he look good? He looked great. Um, he even talked. He speaks your language. He speaks Gaelic. Amen? You, you thought St. Patrick got rid of them all. They just, they just washed a few up in the, on, the, on the seas, my dear. So when you go to Ireland, you, you just get those snakes back out. Amen? So he does have conversation. Now, We've been taught in spiritual exercises, never converse with the devil. Mm. Why? Because though yeah. all of you are in the Holy Spirit, right. he's usually a little more sly than you are. Yes. So he, can, he loves to twist words and ideas. Mm -hmm. And did God really say that? So what does he have to do? He puts doubt inside of you. Amen? Amen. So, Watch out for those who you think are in, wear white, but not necessarily of the light, mm -hmm. even though he disguises wow. himself in the light. Are you getting all this? Yeah. Okay, so if you underline that there, he disguises himself as angels. Next. Um, so it is strange, verse 15, that if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness, so what is, what is St. Paul calling the super apostles here? He's calling them false and disguise themselves like the devil. Like the angels of what? Light. Now, in 2 Peter chapter 2, when these angels come to you, they come to you first on your platform of saying something really, really good. But then they will lead you. Now, remember, if you, the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians, test the spirits. Do you understand how you're going to test the spirits? And you can always begin by saying, can you, again, can you say, Jesus is Lord? Okay? A lot of people love to tell me, and they, they want me to do exorcisms over them. Everybody runs for an exorcism. Exorcisms in this general area are rare. But they are starting to increase. So I said to them, stay right where you are and say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. And I said, you're not possessed. Mm. Now go to bed. <laughs> Amen. Because if you have the Holy Spirit in you, you can't say Jesus is Lord. You can't, if you have devil in you, you can't say that. You can't say that. Amen. So the fifth thing is angels and you watch out because in this latter day I believe supernaturally God's going to give us the great gift of these angels and number two I believe a lot of them are going to be false and they are are based on the super apostles with, with bad boasting they can't mention the good boasting and they are disguised okay see when you're in the kingdom of darkness how many ever heard of Halloween before now, when I was a little guy, 
my mother was working. So every year I was the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, it comes to October 31st, and then of course, I'm a typical kid and I wanted my m &Ms. So I go up to the attic, and I look, and I just, I became a bum. But I came with a clean bum. You know, sometimes you put all the stuff all over your face. And so I just wrapped myself in an old jacket and with all patches on it that were um, bobby pinned on or whatever else they put it on. Remember the bobby pins? Uh -huh. Do you remember those bobby pins you used to wear? Yeah. How did you dare put those things on and everything else? Have them. You still have them. Yeah, they work. Yeah, they work. They work good. So, in the opposite vein, when our Halloween comes, we put on something, generally speaking, negative and dark, right? Yes, yeah, true. And I remember walking on my, because the 30th is my, my anniversary, and I, I went hysterical. I was in New York City. There was a very tall lady, extremely tall. And she had a little tiny witch's hat about this. <laughs> and she, that, and I, I first, I could not stop laughing. You see this, this lady, and it's just like, a, she looked like one of those chocolate kisses or something. And, and just, you, know how, you, know how, you know how the tip works around there like that? I just, I could not get this image of this tall lady with a little chocolate noonan on the top of her hat. In the kingdom, what, what do we do? We put on darkness. What do they do? Put on light. So they go the opposite. So, and what is, what is, the, what is the basics of them going opposite? They appear righteous and put in there, put in there in quotes, self-righteous. Because it'll be directed, even though it may start off with they're very humble, like the cult, the Jehovah Witnesses, are one of the most deceptive groups. And a lot of times you'll say, they're very nice. So do you, do you, see, the, do you see the flip? Yeah. Now, let, let me tell you about the flip. The flip is when we say the way to, the way to heaven is narrow. They'll say the way to heaven is wide. See the flip? So they take Matthew 7, 13 and flipping and so they that's why they'll say did God really say that mm -hmm. today with that abominable parade in New York City and around the world oh, yes. they flipped the scripture mm. they absolutely flipped it and they have confused millions and many three to four million people on the streets of New York were into deception mm -hmm. thinking they were born that way amen. amen so I mean this is this is this is who they are this is this guy all right, verse 15. So do you see what kind of spirit they have? What kind of spirit do these angels have? Their end will correspond to their deeds. Now Jesus says to us in John 13, 35, they'll know you, they'll know you by your love. They don't love. They want to what? Destroy. Remember Satan, as we've been through this before, a deceiver, a murderer, a destroyer, and a liar. Did anybody here ever lie? Everybody shake your head yes about a thousand yeah. times. We have all lied, haven't we? Yes. And yes. it does seem to increase. We love to lie. Because we don't want to be caught in uh, telling the truth might have to have some consequences. So right there you can get a good glimpse <coughs> of who these super apostles are today. Are they alive today? Yes. yes. Where are they found mostly? They're everywhere, but mostly in the clergy. Mm -hmm. Mostly in the clergy. Mostly, mostly there you'll see that. Amen? Amen. Sister Marie. Yeah. Number six. Good stuff? Yeah. Yep. Now, number six about the angels and you before you Saint Raphael is the Lord commands thousands of them Thousands of them are commanded. And um, not in necessarily in an earthly life. When he commands them, they go to two levels. Heaven, where are they before now? The throne. Yeah. Now, when you go to Revelation, if you go with me to chapter 
Um, this is point number six. When you go to Revelation 5, in Revelation chapter 4 and Revelation chapter 5, this is Sunday Mass. Does everybody ever do this before? When you go to Revelation 4 and Revelation 5. You should be experiencing church like chapter 4 and ch chapter 5 every day. Do you experience it like that? Now, when you go to church, you've got to see the throne. Do you all see the throne? Yes. Yes. Now, what's around the throne? Who's at the right side, sister? Jesus. Jesus. Now, what comes along the first row before the throne? The seraphim. What does seraphim mean, review? The burning ones. Yes. Now, when they come with their flames, I'm doing quick look on sick look on flames. <laughs> all right. When you have the flames, they all represent the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Wow. Isaiah seven eleven. Now, when you look at Isaiah, I'm sorry, eleven Isaiah eleven two. When you look at Isaiah eleven two, when you read it in Hebrew, sister. There's six. When the Bible is translated into Greek, there are seven. So the seventh one would be called piety. And piety are all your religious practices. Does anybody practice religion? Do you pray every day, sister? Yes. Do you pray on Route 17 every day? <laughs> yes. Now, surrounding the throne are all these, what is called, myriads. Not Miriam, myriads. All right, now, so number six is the angels are always called myriads because they, now look at chapter four and chapter five of Revelation. This is your church worship every Sunday. You see in there everybody gathering. Ready to go fast? Oh. No. All right, if you look at verse number, verse number Six. four, four. Around the throne are 24 thrones. Wow. And see on the thrones are 24 elders, clothed in white garments. Now, when you go to heaven, what color are you going to wear? White. 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 Why? Because you're? Pure. 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 And what else? That's true. You're married. Yes. Oh, yeah. I like that. You're married. And the Lord will never say, stop your Jeep. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so now, what, what's going to happen is you're going to be clothed in white garments, golden crowns. Of, how many crowns are there, Sister Eileen? Five. Six. Now, you're going to see from here the theophany of flashes of lightning. When you go to church every Sunday, that should be happening to you. Do you see that? Well, you just look at Prince Charming over here. Now, when you have that, Look at verse number 8. I just want to show you church in here. Holy, holy, holy. Isaiah 6. Yep. Now, who appears in Isaiah 6? Angels. Angels. Yeah. The seraphim. So, if you put down there, holy, 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 everybody look at verse number 8. 4, 8. Now, you got to put in there who? Isaiah 6. Isaiah 6 and who? Who are they? The yes. seraphim. Yes. So when you go to church, did you know, did you say holy, holy today? Yes. Yes. Uh, when you said holy, 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 who came, who was singing with you? The seraphim. The seraphim. Did you hear them? Wow. Next. <laughs> then we have uh, uh, the, everybody worshiping him. Next, what was the song? The um, worthy are you. Okay, you got you to keep singing worthy. Next, uh, chapter 5. What, what is this? Find the Bible in there. Did you find the Bible? Scroll. Scroll, yeah. Scroll, right. Did you find it in there? Yeah. Who is worthy to open the scroll? When it's open, what do you got to do? Stand up. Hello? Yes. Did you stand up today? Yes. yes. Hmm. Verse 4. Weep not, because this is the, the line of the tribe of... Yehuda. Look at verse number six. See the seven spirits of God? 
See the spirits in there? See the angels? So it's absolutely uh, shown beyond a shadow of a doubt. Now, what should what what should you have done in church that you didn't do? You didn't fall down. But you did. But you didn't. But you did. But you didn't. But you did. But you did. You knelt down. And then you fell down. See where they fell down? See the seven spirits? Yes. See the seven spirits there? Um, next, you see the worthy? They, they, they're singing. Amen. Now, all that to get you to verse 11. I just want to show you what church should be like every Sunday. If we had church like that on Sunday, did you have it two weeks ago, sister? Yes. If you had church, Miss Eileen came with me to St. Antoninus. It was magnificent. Mm -hmm. If you had church like that, and nobody wanted to leave early, mm -hmm. and people mm -hmm. were dressed, mm -hmm. and the glory of God fell, mm -hmm. and there was bowing down worship of God, mm -hmm. and you got all caught up in that, you would never want to leave. Yeah, no. Now, look at verse 11. You see the angels coming in? See the angels? Then I looked and I heard the throne and the living creatures and the elders, the voice of many angels. How do you say that in Greek? Myriads. The only way the Bible describes the angels are myriads. There's just so many. Now, in Genesis 1, 2, I told you a thousand times, they're already created. There's never a new angel populated. <coughs> angels cannot beget angels. Of course, your wife is an angel, but outside that. Amen? There's no little, little baby angels. Angelettes with little boom-booms that are popping in February 14th. <laughs> Did you ever see the little ones? Okay. There is no such thing. Amen? So, and then look, look at numbering myriads and myriads. Now, that's called thousands of thousands. See verse 11? Now, notice, notice what they keep proclaiming. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Now, Jesus is both the shepherd and the lamb. Someone explain that one to me, huh? He's the shepherd and the lamb. Now, every time you hear the word lamb, it was John's favorite title for Jesus in Revelation. It's mentioned 28 times. Sister Marie's going to give me a number. Go ahead. 28, you know what that means, right? Only God is one. So do you think that's the one? Okay, I knew that was coming. All right. I even set myself up for a whole part of this one. So John speaks twenty-eight times about the lamb. About that. About do you like that? He speaks oh, yeah, twenty times yes. about the lamb. Mm -hmm. Now notice the angels are in awe of Jesus being the lamb. Sister, so, are you getting that? Mm -hmm. Okay. When they are, they are they are in awe of the crucifixion. When was the first appearance of the Lamb? It, it happened in the Passover, Exodus 11 hmm. and 12. Do you remember that? When the blood was put on the doors. Now, I was ready to say Genesis 22, but... You can't kill a lamb without having a priest. So in Genesis 22, they had to have the what? The ram killed. In, in Genesis 22 with Avram, yeah. so that the lamb had the ram had to be killed before the lamb because the ram is priesthood. Okay. Wow. So now Melchizedek with the bread and the wine was setting up a priesthood which people could not figure out. Mm. Okay, so that's 
If, if you're a man of God and you're a Catholic priest today, that's what you should be embracing. And when you live in that, the people should be in awe of what's going on through you to the congregation. Mm -hmm. One man said to me, I love the idea that when Father does Mass, he just pauses so reverently. I just love that. And I said, right on. Go, Father, go. Mm -hmm. Go. Yeah. Just, just hold him up. There's some priests that just see, they just bow beautifully before the Lord. Mm -hmm. And they're just, one priest that just kind of st stared at, and like, go, 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 you got it. Amen. Amen. Okay, everybody, everybody see it now. What did they say? Yeah. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom, might, power, glory, and blessing. Now, how many things do you see there? Sister Maria will give me a thing now. Seven. Sister Maria. It is fulfillment. It is fulfillment. Very good, Sister Maria. You're welcome. Do you see the seven? So they say worthy. Okay, and because of the Lamb. And then what else do angels do? They bring to us the full... Now watch, this is really good. Turn the person, this is really good. This is really good. With the angels around you, you have the... You, what angels do, I told you this before, but now here's another added thought. I told you, when you look at Revelation, it goes from three attributes to four attributes, now to seven attributes. And who starts singing this? Are the myriads of angels. Wow. So now when we go to heaven, Lord willing, all of us, it'll be the full seven. And then uh, Marie will be with all the Italian angels. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Making gnocchi bolognese. Well, cook, well, cook. Cook. <laughs> and then everybody will be worshiping the lamb. Now what will they be saying in heaven? Those seven attributes. So when you're at two o'clock in the morning in front of the Blessed Sacrament, you sing to God those attributes. That's who he is. Now, Islam has, you know, the 99. Uh, Sister Pat. No. So that's what you build toward every day. May I make a suggestion for our prayer life? Go to the seven every day. Okay, everybody got the angels? Wow. Do you like angels now? Yeah. Now, the seventh thing of angels, Sister Marie. On his, on his crown, he had seven diadems. Diadems, diadems. diadems. I want to show you one other verse. Just, if you go to, but I want to get you into Saint Raphael. No, you don't have to rush. Just oh, rush. now she doesn't want me to rush. <laughs> All right, yes. Forget Saint Raphael. All right, now go with me to Matthew. <laughs> you can't Are you enjoying this? Yes. yes. Someone say, please say Sister Marie. Oh, please. She's already Sister saved. Sister Marie. Yeah. All right, now. Say it. <laughs> In Matthew twenty-six. Matthew 26, verse 53. What do we hear about the angels? Sister, where we go? 26, 53. We already, we already did this. Okay. Uh, do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father, and He will at once send me more than 12 legions of angels? All right, now, who are those 12 legions of angels? Can we tell you who they are? They are the ones at the throne. Hmm. They have to be the seraphim. They were the ones at the throne. So when Jesus is speaking that, so put put that down there. That. The ones at the throne. See all the connections you're making now? So can you imagine, if I wanted to, um, I could send you 72,000 angels and we're all of them now. Because what's at the throne? Myriads and myriads. And what are they th saying? Worthy is the Lamb. And what are they doing? Bring the seven attributes of God. Seventy-two angels reduces to nine. You know what that is? The most holy trinity. The power of the trinity. Hallelujah. Larry. <laughs> he's getting nervous. He's the spirit. <laughs> now he's getting nervous. Number seven. All right, now we, we've already we've already studied this issue. Um, number seven. 
one angel might destroy a thousand. Remember we did that in Isaiah 38? Remember it wasn't the bubonic plague of history? One angel might destroy a thousand and then wind up in your house the next day. Number seven, one angel might destroy thousands and be in your house the next day. Let me show you what I mean. Where did he destroy thousands of angels? Remember Isaiah with Sinatra? Mm -hmm. We've already studied that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 38, yeah, yeah. how many, remember all those people who what dropped dead? Yeah. Really? Uh, did, you, did you do that? Did you go to history and look at that? Mm -hmm. Go online, sister. When? No, not right now. You don't do that. Before you go to bed. And read, read out what happened to them. Read out what happened to them. History says rats came out. Well, there must have been a rat army. And they all got the bubonic clay. You know what I call that? Nonsense. Donkey dust. But that's how secular, that was an actual historical fact that these men dropped dead. So at least they admit that they dropped dead. They, did, they do admit that so far. Yeah, they won't say the, yeah. But they cannot say, a a a a a Now what the angels are going to do is separate the wheat and the chaff. They're going to assist people going to hell. On the other good level for us, they're going to assist us going to what? Heaven. Now we told you when Jesus was going to heaven in the ascension, there were what? Angels. Now, we already know this story. Uh, we went through it before and we had a good study on that. Now let's see when they start to appear in your home. Hebrews 13. Are you getting good stuff, sister? Yes. Too fast too fast. I am deliberately <laughs> telling myself to slow down and now she's still saying it too fast. Hebrews 13? Yes. Now, when we look at Hebrews 13, just to give you a, a minutia of background, this is the blood covenant. We're doing a new Bible study on the covenants and we're going to end in the power of the blood. Do you know I never studied the power of the blood before? And that should be my second. Uh, so when we get into that covenant, we're only on that. We're going into the third one tomorrow night. The blood okay. Covenant. What does it say, Sister Marie? What verse? 13, 1 and 2. Go. Oh, okay. Let brotherly love continue. All right. Do you love everybody? Yes. Everybody. Yeah. You love Brother Larry's friends? Absolutely. Everybody in your church? Yes. And if you think bad, you say, stop it, in the name of yeah. Jesus. Yes. That's when they tell us, say, stop your Jeep. You stop your Jeep. Yes. All right, go ahead. And then I apologize. All right, okay. now. Do not, <laughs> you want verse 2? Now, why do you have verse 1 before verse 2? Let brotherly love continue. You've got, to, you've got to show them the way to go. That's right. Go ahead now. Then you can see verse 2. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers. All right, now. Okay. All right, now, we just love. Hospitality means opening your door. Right. Go. For thereby some have entertained angels <clears throat> unawares. Wow. Right now, um, uh, God has given us a gift of angels. Um, and you, you are, they're around you day by day. One lady drives a little black car. They're around that little black car. Amen? So, they're always around you. They're always around you all day long. Amen. So, Amen. I gotta always get in the custom to say, God, protect me in this car. Mm -hmm. You know when I start to pray the prayer, when all of a sudden a car almost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, so wow. I, say, yeah. I say to self, for God to pray. Right. So now you entertain angels unaware. unaware. Now they're ready at God's beck and call. Now I want you to have a great rest of your life, and every day you wake up, send some angels. Georgette needs them. Amen? Amen. Right. Would, would you like angels? So, they come, so that is, they will come literally to your house. They destroy thousands, but will come to your house. How many like that about angels? Yes. 
Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Sister yeah. Marie. I'd like to see one. Well, I, I would like to. You've been married to him for quite some time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that one I know. <laughs> but now. <laughs> All right. Now, Isaiah 38 is, they can bump off that many. They're very powerful. Don't what, where was that in Isaiah? He didn't give us the verse. I'm looking and looking, and I couldn't find it. Peter, give her the verse. Go. It's not doing that. Is it 37? Probably. No, I have a chapter. Uh, 38 is about his wife extending 15 years. 37. 37, 36. Oh, thank you. You're off, sister. Get to the Bible. Wait. Oh, goodness. 37, 36. Isaiah. 37, 36. So what does it say? Now, if you look again, just, just to review, if you look at... Isaiah 37, 36. Oh, and the angel of the Lord. And the angel. See the angel? Yes. No, you want to see the angel? Of the Lord. So who's that? Jesus. That's Jesus. our Lord Jesus. Remember when we have the angel? So everybody could put in there, uh, pre-incarnate Christ. I think what they did today in New York again has so blasphemed the Lord. That I'm surprised <coughs> lightning can oh. come out. No. Excuse me. That reduces to five. Thank you. And they wanted to be like God. So yes. Jesus got rid of them. Do you like all that? Yes, I love it. All right now, number eight. <laughs> <laughs> number eight. Number, what, was, what did you title number seven? Sister. One time he destroys the thousand. Yeah, makes the one power over the thousand one angel reduces thousand. to the one. <coughs> one angel will destroy the thousand. thousand. And the next day he goes into your house. Now, okay. and this, make it a seven. And the seven put down Jesus, the angel of the Lord. Yes. Okay, everybody see that? Yeah. Now, watch this. This is really good. The, and then we could do your friend Raphael. Do you like Raphael, Mrs. Kennedy? Very much. Okay, Mrs. Kennedy. Do you want to hear that one? Yes. All right. Now, Jesus is coming in the second coming. Oh, Amen? Amen. When he's coming, he's coming over Mawa. <laughs> I'm waiting. <laughs> when he comes, he comes with Second Thessalonians 1. He comes with angels. Now I told you before, this is review. Review is a good teacher, isn't it? Yes. Either you're going to be here to see him come, or you're coming with him so the others will see him. Which side will you be on? Now when he comes, Jesus will come with his diadem, right? Yes. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Oh, you do remember that. When he comes, there will be behind him angels, the bajou, <laughs> and all the people redeemed will be right behind him. Now, interestingly, in Revelation 19, when he comes, he's coming for the ultimate battle, but nobody in this room will do you're going to be there, but you're not going to participate in the battle because the battle has already been won. Once you die and get your, your brand new bodies, and then all of a sudden there'll be all the little simmies down here. <laughs> Wait, let's put a little flip there. Amen. She's happy. She's yeah, so she's happy. happy. She is. She's so happy. She's so happy. <laughs> Even though she didn't let Father Bill take her to Israel. But anyway, uh, <laughs> which side are you going to be on? What you talking about? Mm -hmm. This side now. What this does, here are the angels. Here's Jesus. Why? Because where he is, they got to what? Follow oh, him. Absolutely. Where you go, your angel goes. Oh, nice. I like that. I bet your angel's saying, I'm glad God gave me a good one. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Now, 
when you see these angels, an unbelievable thing happens. Are you ready for this? <coughs> Show the person next to this is really good. This is, this is really, really good. good. <laughs> when you see these angels coming, <laughs> with your bijou, with your bijou, sister, Yes. the bijous are coming. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> By the way, a bijou is called Sister Maria's mother. <laughs> That means flawless, like a diamond. Now, That's what my dad called on his deathbed. When, when everybody who's redeemed, they're coming. Revelation 19, Jesus says in Italian, pasta, no, pasta. <laughs> no, Amen. it might be pasta. <laughs> now, here's Simi down here. She looks up. And there comes glad wing. <laughs> Is she going to be married to him? No. 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 She goes to say to Jesus, my love. And good wind, glad wind, whatever the heck it is. He'll start saying, yes, Simi, it's Jesus. So now, what happens when all of this unbelievable something happens? Are you ready for your M's now? Ready for M and M's? What starts forming is an unbelievable power of majesty. Why? Majesty. Now, as soon as he comes, the first M is a majestic coming. This is going to be so unbelievable glory with angels. There will be those who will have missed it forever. The majesty is coming. It's an explosion of the holiness, the light, the brightness of God. Yeah. It's the Shekinah, it's the Kabod. It's the everything you could possibly look upon Him. So that's majesty. Do you understand why that's my favorite song? Mm -hmm. Majesty, worship His majesty. Mm -hmm. I know you want me to sing it. Mm -hmm. right, now, the, the second thing that happens when you see this happening, amen, is you're going to see the second M, you're going to see the might, the might of God. He is the mighty God. So, when you think of the second coming, majesty, mighty indeed is God. So that's the second thing, is you're going to see the might of God. How many can't wait to see that? Third thing, an unbelievable thing is going to happen is you're going to be surrounded by these messengers. Everybody will be moving. Today, sister, because you miss good stuff, the reason why Jesus says, I have nowhere to lay my head, is because I'm always moving. And if you're a disciple, you're always moving too in the things of the Spirit. Amen. You can't stay, so you have no place to lay your, you got to keep moving. Mm -hmm. And so we have majesty, the explosion. We have, we see the power. We have the messengers of God yeah. going all over. And it's going, what, to and fro the earth. Job chapter 1. Do you see my messengers going to and fro? Who can we call? How many are excited about that? And then we, then we have an unbelievable thing happening, too. As soon as we look up in the heavenlies on the second coming, we have those who are ministering to Him. So, when you read Hebrews chapter 2, it calls the angels ministering spirits. Excuse me. Thank you. They are worshiping Him, they are singing to Him, they are praising Him, they are proclaiming Him, and it's non-stop, night and day. So now, this is a mind-blowing statement. I'm trying to go slow, sister. It is our job to minister to God night and day. Amen? Amen. How do you do that? You tell Him you love Him, you tell Him you need Him. How many talk to God when you're driving in the car by yourself? Mm -hmm. When you walk along? Let's say you have three dogs and you're walking them and you talk to God alone. Amen? Mm -hmm. So you, 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 just, you just keep talking. You're ministering to Him. Mm -hmm. uh, or maybe you're happy. 
You're the King of Kings, and the Lord. Maybe you're sad. You're the King of Kings, and the Lord, and the Lord. <laughs> Maybe Sim Simi looks like she got stung, baby. You're the King of Kings. So, so you're ministering night and day. So what are you going to see when he comes? Majesty, you're the mighty God. The ma everybody's moving around, and we're all ministering to him. So that's the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Are you getting this? Yes. Wow. Are you getting this? Yes. That's number eight. Okay. So number eight, I told you, sister. Number eight is one angel will announce the second coming, but the second coming is all-inclusive, including saints. First Thessalonians 4, an archangel will blow the trumpet, and I told you many times that trumpet is in Numbers chapter 10, and it says it goes into a silver trumpet. Sister Marie. Go way too fast. I push the button. Go. I mean, I think if you one angel <laughs> will announce, and then the second one. The second coming. Oh, okay. And First Thessalonians. Oh. Thank 13 you. Thank you. to 21. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. Anything. Thank you. It's all dragged out. But when he comes, <laughs> you have a problem. <laughs> even though, even though one angel announced it, all the angels will be there. Ah. Okay. Now, do you ever pay attention in church? Did that ever happen to anybody? Before you say the Holy Holy, we say now, with their true right, the powers, the thrones. Right. The Did you notice we it's say that? Did you know? Do you know what's happening? Mm -hmm. No, you're in a fog. Mm -hmm. You're, you're saying all these angels the are angels. just coming down right now. Right. You're calling on the angels. Did you know all the angels are, are entering into St. Mary's? Yeah. And they look yes. there like... Yeah. <laughs> so probably all the angels of darkness will participate too, right? Yes. Who are they working on, those who don't see anything? Because they appear as an angel of the light. Amen. Father, are during Mass, are any angels of darkness there? Yes. They are. Yes. In church. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you look at the people? <laughs> <laughs> I told you in my dream is to get a wheelbarrow and throw some of their bodies in. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Now, do you want to look at another psalm, or you want to go into Raphael? Raphael. Raphael. Okay. Raphael. 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 Well, Raphael. Well, well, we'll do it eventually. Do you want to do that tonight, or do Raphael next week, or you want to start Raphael? Whatever you think is best. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay so how much time we need. That way we'll have more yeah, time for mean, Raphael. Got, uh, what time is it? Probably, uh, we will not finish Raphael tonight. Yeah. So we'll do I'll do the psalm. All right, all right. Now, flick with me. Do you know you're going to get stuff, sister? Yes. All right, go to Psalm 138. Right here. Do you like the, this, this angel study? Yes. yes. This is, you know, you're getting good stuff, sister. How could you bounce around the world all the time and everything else? Okay, Psalm 138. Majesty. Your singing is terrible. <laughs> It's not. No, God made the voice, so it can't be. <laughs> We're singing in a choir. What's your problem? I sang in the diocesan choir. All right, this is a psalm about a lot of a lot of trouble we have. Amen. Okay. And. You could sing right now this, look at verse 1. I want to give you several points of what happens when you're in trouble. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, anybody been in trouble? Yes. yes. Anybody have problems? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have plenty. But my favorite is someone will come up and say to me, Sister Mary, pray for me, I'm being attacked. I said, Welcome to life. <laughs> All right, now, so let's go through this. This happens in front of angelic presences. 
What happens? This is what you're going to hear now. Oh, okay. Can you say that again, Father? This is going to happen in front of angelic presences. Ready? Are you ready, Miss yes. Simi? Yes. All right. First one. All right, all right, we're going to go through Psalm 138 now. All right, you got it? You can see it's, it's little, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. all right, and yeah. then we're going to break this down, and then we're going to give you how to get out of trouble. Nobody knows. All right, now. <laughs> the trouble has I give you thanks. How do you say that, Sister Marie? Eucharistia. Yes, thank you. In Greek, how do you say it in Hebrew, Sister Marie? Toda. 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 There you now, go. Thank you. When you say, I give you Sister thanks. <laughs> oh, no, I'm racing. Sister Marie likes <laughs> Hebrew better, she says. Thank you. I was telling Padre Pia, one of my, I, I was teaching the friars the book of the Hebrew, and I, I saw this. I looked at my Hebrew book from the Hebrew scriptures, yeah. and the words started moving away. Mm -hmm. It moved? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I went, whoa. <laughs> Which way did it move? Did it go up? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> they went like this. No, no, it, it started moving this way. Oh, my goodness. I, I had to clear my eyes, you know, this maybe a matter. surrounding you. What were you going to say about Padre Pio? Right well, I was talking to Padre Pio yesterday, and uh, I was just telling him my, my mystical experience. <laughs> and what did he say? He says that he believes me. Okay. Right now, let, let's go through this because this okay. happens in front of angels. Okay. Right now, uh, just a, a word background on this. David was in trouble. And the trouble he had is people didn't like him. Anybody ever have that problem? Mm -hmm. Irma, we all love you. Oh, thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. I love you too. All right, now. This is called David the Fugitive. So he's, he's got to run away. But he, he got saved. Remember, in Saul's palace, Saul got so mad at David, he threw a spear at him. And it just went, didn't hit him. So how many have ever had close calls? Let's go through your personal trouble now. They are now being dealt with in the midst of angels. Hmm. We told you where they are. We told you now how they're going to be doing some fighting. Right? Ready? First, first one. This is really good. Now we're going to be focusing in on ultimately verse 7. Of, we're going to go through the whole thing, but we're going to focus on verse 7. Okay. okay. And so that is the centerpiece. Revive me in the midst of trouble. Ongoing trouble is part of my life. Amen? Amen. All right, that's, that's what we're going to do. Now, everybody on the line, I give you thanks. Everybody say that. I, I give, give you thanks. I give you thanks. Now, toda. Toda. Everybody say toda. 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 Now, when you give thanks, it means your personal indebtedness to God. Jesus said it once in Matthew eleven twenty five. Father, I give you thanks. I've been part of the Charismatic Renewal since 1975. And I hear very bad prophecy coming. My people, my people, I thank you for coming. No. no, no, no. God, I told you a million times, never thanks me. you. Why? He's not indebted to you. Right. 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 We're indebted. We are indebted, indebted to, to him. him. So when I hear that, I go, Ugh. Bad Bible, bad biblical preference. So yeah. here he says, I give you thanks. Why? He's running away. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite spots, I tried to get you there, but Peter's B&H camera wasn't working. Mm -hmm. And I tried to get you into Engedi to show you some mm -hmm. caves and everything else. We'll get you there. And I know you two didn't go there. You went, you went to Engedi? No. Now you better pay attention next time. Mm -hmm. I give you thanks to God with my whole heart. How do you say heart, Sister Marie? Live. With my, my whole live. And that is the very center of your emotions. How many here have been emotional wrecks? Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. All right, now, put a little star there. Before the angels, I sing your praise. Whoa. Mm. 
Remember he had a little instrument called a... Uh, liar. A liar. <coughs> it's a miniature harp. It's a harpette. You got that? When he sang, mm -hmm. he broke down the power of hell. Amen. When you sing praises to God, you break down the power of hell. Hell can stand there. Now, what do you do that? You do it before... Here's your word in Hebrew, sister. Remember the word? You do it before the mulach. mulach. It sounds like a Walt Disney movie. <laughs> That's the Hebrew word for angels. You do it, but you sing praises. Because what are they doing right now? We're the myriads and myriads. They're before the throne. Right. Remember Jesus just said he can bring down 72,000 of them. Yes. Are you getting this? So, what do you got to do when you feel trouble coming into your heart? Start singing. Alright, amen. Go in your little black car, close the windows. You've got interesting people that surround you, sister. Now, yep. In this interpretation, it says, he's saying here, before the gods with the low, small g, yeah. I sing thy praise. Right. So in other words, before whatever evil is attacking him, he right. sings God's praise. The, the Hebrew would say, Elohim. The angels have always been called the Benoth, what they, the Benai. So he's not talking about the evil that's attacking him. He, he's praising God. No, no. We're going to get to. We're going to get oh, there in a minute. Right, but what this means before he the God. The other name is the Benai Olachim. The other word for angels is Molach. Yeah, but he's not. They're not angels. Is what he's saying here. That's what I understand. No, they are. Before the gods. Why is he calling them gods? I, they're angels. Holy Spirit, help me. Yeah, why is it Another name for them is called the, the Ben Elohim. In the Hebrew, it says Elohim. Yes. Yeah. It's another, another name, name for, for angels. angels. Yeah. Okay. We've been through this before. <laughs> it's another name. I'll give an example. Job 38. I, I've been that with you. It's the only reference to possibly angels singing. It's called the Benai Elohim. Okay. The sons of gods. Yes. Now we only believe in one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do you still believe that? Yes. yes. Now so we, got, we call this the Benai Elohim. Okay. The Benai Elohim. It's another name for angels. Okay. 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 And that's also in Psalm 8. We've been through that before. It's the, uh, your Bible is not incorrect. In, fa in fact, when you read the Hebrew, it would say B'nai Elohim. Okay. And it's another word for angels. Mm. Okay. What does that mean? Let's, would you like a deeper explanation? Oh, sure. All right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what we have done is because what they appear like to us. They appear like people. So because they appear like people in front of us, he doesn't see a dude with wings. I just saw his wings. <laughs> <laughs> so what does he do? When he starts singing, all these angels start appearing. Wow. They mm. look like us. Wow. So he wow. says, I'm in front of the God. sons wow. of God. Good. They don't have the big wings. Mm. All of a sudden you see one dude in white, another one in white, mm. another one in white, and wow. they're all there. And yeah. so here is David singing, I'm in trouble, I live in Piscataway, New Jersey. Help me, help me, help me. My interesting kids, they never call me. I got another kid in Boston, she never calls me. She only when she wants money. And so, I mean, and all of a sudden, they start appearing. Wow. That's nice. Boop, And they start appearing. Nice. And when he starts, he sees them. Mm -hmm. When he sees them, there's they're people. They look like people, but they're not people. They're very. You could see through them. So they are the Banach, sons of Elohim, the sons of God. Okay. Wow. 
Wow. So now this gives you a clear picture. So now this is called, what word did I want to use? Holy Spirit, someone come. This is called personification. Mm -hmm. This is making the angels so real to you mm -hmm. that you see them. Now, when, you ready for this? Turn to the person next to you. You're getting good stuff. You're getting good, 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 good stuff. stuff. When you start singing, how many of you heard of St. Francis? I don't know yeah. if Mrs. Resurrection was in the room. But one day at St. Francis prayer meeting, a rabbi walked in. I guess accidentally. He heard everybody singing in tongues. And he says, how do they know that? They were singing it in ancient Hebrew song in tongues. Wow. wow. And the rabbi, yeah. the rabbi went, I had, I had a friend too, Ruth, Mrs. Resurrection knows her. Hopefully she's home with the Lord. I think she is Mrs. Resurrection. Yes, and he went with my aim on the, and the bajou. <coughs> and uh, so what happened is Ruth got Alzheimer's. She was over here in Linden in the Care 1 or Care 17, whatever they're caring for. And how many know when yeah, you, you minister to those people, they, the average stay is two years, by the way. Did you know that? People, how long was your mother there? Four and a half. Uh, mm -hmm. The average issue. They she said she was the same. She was. She was a pajou. Nobody so, lasts that long. And mm -hmm. so what happened is was there Ruth started day. singing in tongues, and the whole place calmed down. Huh. Wow. How about that? Wow. And so this is the Bene awesome. Elohim. Awesome. That's this awesome. Is, so when you start That's singing, the Bene Elohim coming. Mm -hmm. Are, are you ready for the next one? Now, can you already see now, he's a fugitive. Did you put in there he's running away right now? You ready to go on the next verse? Our time is almost up. We'll never get to Raphael. I told you. That's okay. I bow down before your holy temple. Now, when you have, you're with the angels. Everybody see the angels? Number one, you, you go into the direction of the temple, the Chekel. <laughs> you got to go into the to the direction of the sanctuary. Now every Saturday night I, I, I say a special psalm, and I'm right by the church. I always do this. I put my hand up toward the temple. I put my hand up toward the presence of the Blessed Sacrament. Wow. So I face the direction. In the book of Acts, in the book of Acts, <coughs> Paul was saying goodbye to his companions. They went down to the water. Why did they go down to the water? Because the water somehow would hit Jerusalem. And what would they do? In Daniel 6, what was he doing? He's in Iraq, and he's facing toward Jerusalem. What happens when the Jews are on your plane? They get up, and what are they doing? They're facing toward Jerusalem. Right. Did you know that? And driving me nuts, of course. And uh, so they... Did you see the Jews getting up and facing toward Jerusalem on your plane? Why did you go through Switzerland or Geneva or, or Istanbul or whatever they're actually going through? Poland, oh my hell, more so. And so they face toward the Hekel with the angels, the Benach al -Him. You come up and you face the direction. All right now, what's happening already? I'm in a holy presence. Can you do this at 2 o'clock in the morning, sister? And then you face her. Now, you ready for the next one? You, you got this? Is this good? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I bow down before your temple and give you thanks to your name for your mercy and your faithfulness. All right now, you got to bring in that God is faithful. So, God is... So, number two... You proclaim God's fidelity and His hesed, His mercy, and His emunah. You proclaim that God is faithful. As soon as you do that, emunah is faithfulness. When you do that, what are you doing? There's a stability coming in your heart. And who's with you? The angels. Okay, Sister Marie. Wow, awesome. Are you getting this? Yes. See, you were going to miss this tonight. Okay. And then, and then, uh, then we have here, 
You have exalted above everything your name and your word. Hello? Hello? Turn to the person next to you. This is really good. This is really good. The third thing is this. This is, I don't know if I can explain this. I, I'm bouncing and excited inside. That's all right. All right, now note the order. Your name. How do you say names? That's right. Shem. Shem. Shem and your word. Now watch this. Say to the person next to you, this is really good. This is really good. This is good. Now this is a mind-blowing statement I'm going to make. It's in the Bible. The name of God is more important than the Word of God. The Jews, so what order do we have here? When you're with the angels, you're singing to God. Now what, what's starting to be revealed to us? What's going to be the first thing when you see God face to face? Thy word. Psalm 119, verse 105. That's his word. But now we got to exalt his name. Now, I don't know how to describe it. I lack English expression, even Korean expression. Here's his name. Name above all oh, names. Yes. Yeshua. It's got to be Yeshua. Yeshua. Did you ever see during a very pontifical type mass? Mm. Yes. Yes. Mm. Every Sunday. Every Sunday. Mm -hmm. Because this is equal to being blessed with the Eucharist. Mm. Oh. Wow. wow. You should say to me every, every... Are you getting this? Mm -hmm. But he... Are you getting this? Your goosebumps oh. gone? But he has the name... Mm. Above it. it is so now, when I'm running, and I need help, it's your name. Name above all... That's, now you know why I like majesty. Right? Yeah. Yes. We just did that, so the Shem, and how do you say a word? Dabar. Are you getting this? It's good. I still haven't get to my point. And that Father? is why in the New Testament, Father, uh, the Acts of the Apostles and all, they said you are healed in the name of. Father, what is. Now, I'll be right with you. Point number one when you're in trouble, you must experience with all this. Must. Now, I told Brother Peter something, and Brother Peter said that was good. When you do things righteously, you ready for this? God is under obligation to do it. Mm. God's never under obligation. Because he told you this he is my word. He told you that. No, this, he said this is my word, and he has to fulfill the word, so he has put himself under obligation to you. Mm -hmm. Because he's faithful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And his word. God is so God puts himself under obligation to us when we do his will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Peter said he liked that. Yeah. So it's now... True. That makes you cry. It's true. Mm -hmm. When he does that... It's unbelievable. Are, are you saying this with me? Mm -hmm. So you have the Shem, everybody say Shem. Shem. And then you have the Devar, but the Shem is above the Devar. When you do His righteousness. When you do His will, His righteousness, He's under obligation to fulfill it. And guess what happens? Here's a new line for your brother Peter. The plan that you are doing becomes infallible. Mm. Are you thinking about this, sister? You have something to talk to him about tonight. <laughs> Does that blow your mind? Yes. You have entered into the realm is infallible. of infallibility. Mm. I'm not going to sleep tonight. <laughs> Are you getting this, little Marie? That was good. Wow. That's 
I try to go slow so you can get it in. The first thing I, I want to share with you about trouble as we build on this. In times of trouble, we experience the Lord's protection, that He walks with us. And then now, this is now entering into, ready? Hello? Turn the person, this is really, really good. Really times really of trouble. Really this is really, really, really good. It's beyond good. Then you enter into, ready for this? You enter into the full presence of God. Yes. That's beautiful. Good. You think at 2 o'clock you're going to have a different time, sister? Yes. Brother Peter, you getting this? You getting it? Okay. In these last days, I told you, when we look at scripture in between the lines, God's going to rescue everybody here. Amen. So please do me a favor. Stay faithful to Him. Amen. 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 Okay, if you're doing good, I'm sure you're all doing good, do a little better, okay? Mm -hmm. If you're generous, be more generous. If you're loving, be more loving. Titus 1. Okay, now, so we enter the presence. Now, i got more to show you in a minute. Our time is just about out. For you have exalted, underline there, you have exalted everything, your name and your word. Notice he puts the name first, right? Yes. Look at verse 3. On the day I called... You answered me. That my strength of my soul you increased. Yes. And there's Mary for you, Sister Mary. Wow. My soul magnifies the Lord. Amen. Now what happens what happens there is this. Is this good? Yes. This is good. Inside of you your capacity for God enlarges. Now what would happen if you're filled with this much of God? Or this much of God. Mm. You, we've all met holy, holy, holy people and they were like, whoa, I wish I was like that. Did you ever say that when you saw a person? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine having that kind of capacity? I'm studying the life of Charbel these days. Mm -hmm. And I want his capacity. Mm -hmm. In fact, when he died, they buried him in Lebanon for 28 days. There was light coming from his grave. Wow. 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 Now, when we bury Gladwin or whatever his name is, or Goodwin or whatever, I want to see light coming from his grave. Amen. Amen. Are you getting this? Yes. All right, now, we, 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 got, we got some journeying to do here and more points to give you. My strength of soul. Remember when the second coming of point number eight? I, I called you answer me now. Turn the person because it's a really, 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 really good. Now you can understand. Now you finally understand. Bing! What Jesus says, when you ask anything in the Father's name, I will give it to you. Now what's the first thing when you ask in the Father's name? When you ask in the Father's name, the first thing is, I need this little, there's your list. I want to be your presence. Amen. Now I told you about one million times. The outside experience, which is not in the Bible, is called the Shekinah. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. the, the one in the Bible, the inside is called the Kabod. Now, what happens in your soul, in your nefesh, the Kabod enters in where you are, there is God. Let me explain it this way to you. Jesus says in John 12, where I am, there will my servants be. Now if you're Catholic, you can understand the Immaculate Heart of Mary with the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so there's the Shekinah coming in. What enters in us is the Kabod. And this is the, the very, our soul is called the Nefesh. When God made Adam, Genesis 2, 7, there was the breathing on the, the nefesh. How many think Adam was pretty good looking then? And when he saw Eve coming in, he went, va 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 boom. It was like Marie and Larry getting married in Brooklyn. So you could just, you could just see the, 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 the increase. Now, watch this. 
Look at verse 3. On that day, now, what have you, let's see if you're all good Bible studies. What do you he keep saying on that day, on that day, on that day? Remember we said that about a million times? You already, yeah. Salvation, you said it. Right. Right. And this is all in the presence of the what? Angels. Angels. Whoa, somebody say whoa. Whoa. Sister Ray. I have I, I, I have on that day the, the word judgment. Yes. So what's going to happen? It's going to increase. Now, Lord willing, when we all go to heaven, everyone in this room, your soul will expand for all eternity to receive more of the capacity of God inside. That's why you're going to keep learning new things in heaven every minute. Mm -hmm. This is how much I know about... Say God's knowledge is this whole room. This is how much I know about God about Yeah, that. right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so guess what? I got all this room to fill out. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. So now watch this. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this, sister? Yes. Now you finally understand the words. Turn the person because it's really good. This is really good. <laughs> you finally understand the words. You finally understand the words. I must decrease. He must increase. Amen. You finally understand what those words mean. Wow. We're done, Larry. Marie, Marie wants to take you dancing around the building. I love that. And I hate to say, I know we're not done. I'm in the midst of something phenomenal. So we've got to finish and I, I didn't finish point one on this psalm um, and point two, and then, then I got to break That's it down. That's right. I got five points. Then I got to <laughs> then I got to break it down even more about the Just angels in your more. presence. Did Simi get some good stuff? I'm not kidding. So it's the defeating of the original sin. That's what it yes, is. Yes, very good, Larry. She got a right one. Shrinking and shrinking. You got it. You got it. You got it, Sister. You made me happy. That's very, very good. Yes. This is this is just a taste yeah. of what God wants to tell us. Yes. So that we can humanly know what to do here. Yes. Right. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yes. Awesome. This is awesome. This is awesome. You got some for 2 o'clock in the morning now, sister? <laughs> yes. <laughs> holy God, mighty God, Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Amen. Holy, holy, holy in Hebrew. And we ask your blessings upon this and get us excited about you. Your presence, Lord. Your presence is all that we seek. Amen. 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 <laughs>